Hello everyone, I'm the Kiwi Dragon and welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to talk about Crash Team Rumble and given that I've had a hiatus for about four months, I felt it was about time that I did a video discussing everything we know so far about the game, not only because it looks pretty interesting, but also I wanted to generally kind of tell you what I thought about it all. So in essence, the idea of this video will be to look over everything we know about the game and dissect it a little. So if you're someone who's still undecided as to whether or not you'll buy Crash Team Rumble, you're sitting on the fence a little bit, this video may or may not be helpful for you. So let's go over the good, the bad, and the Wumper. First of all, if by now on the off chance you haven't heard what this new game Crash Team Rumble is about, I'll give you a very quick rundown. Crash Team Rumble is an online competitive 4v4 team-based game with platforming and collectathon elements. In the game, heroes and villains from the Crash universe battle to collect more Wumper Fruit than the other team in order to be victorious. Each player will have their own skills and abilities which they can strategically use to battle the opposition, defend their goal, and capture key vantage points around the map which can be used to their advantage. The characters that players pick will also have a role that each character was designed in mind with, but the roles are not strict, described as being soft roles, essentially suggesting how one should be used, but not necessarily how you can use it. The game is very flexible on that. These roles are scorers, whose primary objective is to collect Wumper Fruit across the map and deliver them to their team's bank, blockers, who play defense and are tasked with stopping opponents from scoring, and lastly, boosters, who capture gems across the map to boost their team's score. They also activate relic stations, which give teammates special powers to gain an advantage. Speaking of relic stations, they are a new feature which will appear in every map. After collecting enough relics, players can activate them to give unique effects depending on the map. This includes encasing the player in a giant beach ball to knock around enemies on one map, and a giant catapult on another. On each map there will also be one epic relic station, which requires a lot of relics, likely from multiple members of your team, to use. These range from a bonus bank to score more Wumper Fruit on the Just Beachy map, to Nitrous Oxide flying around in his ship firing a laser blast in Calamity Canyon, to Uka Uka shielding you while raining down Hellfire and Brimstone in the Tiki Towers map. In mentioning Uka Uka and Nitrous Oxide, I'll take this opportunity to discuss the characters that are currently playable in Crash Team Rumble. At this time, we have eight confirmed playable characters, those being classic characters like Crash, Coco, Cortex, Dingo Dahl, and Embryo as well as recent additions like the Alternate Universe Tauna and the Alternate Universe Female Entropy, or as many people refer to both of them, Alt Tauna and Femtropy, both of whom first appeared in Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. The eighth and final character is technically a brand new character known as Cat Bat, which as you can guess is a mutant fusion of a cat and a bat who first made an appearance as a cameo in some artwork shown in the 106% ending of Crash 4. Not much else is known about their personality at this stage, or their alignment with regard to if the character is a hero or a villain. While these are the only characters that have been officially unveiled so far, other additional heroes were seemingly teased via icons on a background image that was previously viewable from the Crash Team Rumble section on the Crash Bandicoot website, but have since appeared to have been removed. The icons on this image, which was later made clearer by Crashy News, not only represented previously unveiled characters like Crash, Coco, and Cortex, but also appeared to tease the original male entropy and engine, as well as some special guests in the form of Spyro the Dragon and Ripto. In addition, there are two other icons, a TNT crate and a leaf. While not instantly obvious to everyone, these icons have been speculated in popular online theories to be Ripperoo and either Papu Papu or Elora respectively. But at this stage there are only 8 confirmed playable characters for the game's launch, though some rumours have been swirling that suggest that the initial base roster will consist of either 9 or 10 characters. Personally, I'd like to think we'll have a bigger roster when the game launches, I'm thinking 12 to 16 characters. And while I think 8 to 10 is a rather small number of characters to play with, I am fine with starting out small and allowing players to try out all the characters and see which one plays the best for them. 
However, on the flip side, I can also see fans of Crash Bandicoot games losing interest and dropping out of the game if additional characters aren't introduced sooner than later. The same can be said for fans who are also looking for very specific characters to be added into the game and hoping that the game would have a massive roster, say, like Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. If you're someone who enjoys the whole cast of core characters from Crash Bandicoot games, for the most part, in terms of wants and needs being met, I feel that most people will potentially end up being happy with the initial roster and any later expansions. However, if you were around in the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel days and you're hoping for more obscure or meme-worthy additions to be added in Crash Team Rumble, like Rilla Roo, Hasty, Yaya Panda, King Chicken, or even the Iron Checkpoint crate, I think you may be setting yourself up for disappointment. On a positive note though, it would be great to have Spyro in Crash Team Rumble, and I hope that happens sooner than later. Though I wonder if he'll look the same as he did in the Reignited trilogy, or if we'll have another Spyro redesign. Only time will tell. I might do a video on the roster in the near future as far as who could be in the game and who I'd like to see added after the game launches. If you'd like to see that video, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified about future videos. Speaking of the game's launch, the game is available to pre-order right now for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and Series S. The game will officially launch on June 20th, 2023. Unfortunately, there is no Nintendo Switch version or PC version available at this stage. No reason has been given as to why there are no Switch or PC ports, and while I'd like to try and put a positive spin on it and say maybe there will be Switch and PC ports later down the line, I'm not so confident on that front. At this point, the lack of a port to PC isn't surprising, as there was a similar issue with Nitro Fuel not coming to PC, and while the reason for it back in 2019 and again now in 2023 has never been officially cleared up, I have seen theories online as to why the Switch has missed out on Crash Team Rumble, and it comes down to the game being cross-platform. That's right, if you don't know, this will be the first cross-platform Crash Bandicoot game. Players on PS4 and PS5 will now be able to play with and against family and friends who own an Xbox One, an Xbox Series X, or the Series S model. Personally, as someone who plays games on a PS4, I'm very happy I'll be able to have another game to play with my Xbox friends in addition to the games we have already been playing like Fall Guys, Fortnite, and Rocket League. But it is bittersweet that friends of mine who are Nintendo Switch and PC players will have to miss out on the experience at this stage. Next up is the price, and by now many of you who have pre-ordered will know what the price is, but if you don't, the base game will be $29.99 USD, while the Deluxe Edition is $39.99 USD. There are some differences between the two versions of the game. Both versions obviously include the game itself, and you'll also get the Season 1 Battle Pass for free because, yes, there is a Battle Pass system, which is something I'll return to later on in the video. You'll also get access to the Retro Threads Torna skin, but at this stage, we don't know what that is. If I were to guess, I'd say it's probably a skin for Alt Torna, which swaps her Crash 4 attire for the attire of the original Torna with the pink shirt and the blue shorts. And finally, both versions will have access to the closed beta, which is something else I'll discuss a little later in this video. You might be wondering what exclusive items are included if you pre-order the Deluxe Edition, so I'll quickly go over them. You'll get access to everything in the base game, as well as an instant 25 tier boost for the Season 1 Battle Pass. You'll also get the Season 2 Battle Pass for free, and the Digital Proto Pack, which includes 8 blocky hero skins, Pixelated Shadow, Get On My Level, Victory Music, Blocky Hat, Blocky Backpack, Blocky Score Effects, and a unique banner. This of course confirms the inclusion of selectable skins, which were kind of a given after Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel and Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, and there will also seemingly be selectable shadows, hats, backpacks, scoring effects, banners, and victory music. Apparently in terms of victory music though, Toys for Bob have confirmed there will be a range of selectable tracks from previous Crash Bandicoot games. 
I'm personally hoping that it includes some tracks from the PS2 and Game Boy Advance Crash Bandicoot games, but that's just pure speculation on my part. Sticking with the subject of music very briefly, I am a little surprised that we haven't heard much in the way of new musical compositions for the game. A lot of teasers and gameplay for Crash Team Rumble have music from Crash 4 or the Insane Trilogy in the background, but there's nothing new beyond one track which was shared on social media and many of us believe to be the game's main title theme. Now, as you'll know, I'm a sucker for Crash Bandicoot music. I love pretty much all the soundtracks from all the games, which was a big reason for me setting up the Crash Bandicoot Music Daily account over on Twitter. I'm really hoping that the reliance on Crash 4 and Insane music is purely for demonstrational purposes and that we'll eventually get some nice new tracks when the game officially launches, but we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. Now, you will have noticed that a little earlier I mentioned a premium battle pass, and you did hear me right, this game does have a battle pass system. I know that will turn a lot of people off, and initially, one of the big concerns I had for the game was I didn't think it was fair to charge people for a copy of the game and then potentially charge them again for a premium battle pass containing additional content. However, while we don't know what the cost of the Premium Battle Pass is, recently we received some news about how this Battle Pass system will function from an Activision blog post which stated that the Premium Battle Passes, players could unlock aforementioned skins, emotes, cosmetic attachments, banners, victory music and more. You will also go up in ranks in the Premium Battle Pass by completing challenges and leveling up characters. Three things that won't be unlocked in the Battle Pass though are new characters, new maps, and new powers. These will all apparently be earned via seasonal challenges, and you can also unlock some of the cosmetic items via seasonal challenges as well. So in theory, if you want a taste of the next Crash Bandicoot game without putting any additional money down for a battle pass, you can absolutely do that, and you won't miss out on arguably the most important parts of the game, particularly any new characters that could come to the game. In addition to the Premium Battle Pass, I also glossed over the fact that there is a beta for Crash Team Rumble which is starting very soon at the time of me recording this video. It will be a special closed beta which you can play from April 20th through 24th and you'll be able to test out some characters, abilities and maps and generally get a feel for the game. If you pre-order after April 20th but before the end of the closed beta on the 24th, you can still try out the game and will be placed in matches against opponents of similar base ranking as a matchmaking ranking system will be in place, so newer players may not end up facing off against players who've been playing for a while. During this beta, only 5 characters will be playable, those being Crash, Coco, Cortex, Dingodal and Torna. Unfortunately, anyone who is really wanting to play as Embryo, the female Entropy, or Catbat may have to wait until the game launches. There will be four selectable support powers during the beta, the Healing Fridge, the Gasmoxian Guard, the Wumpustache, and the Fly Spitter. While the three selectable maps during the beta will be Tiki Towers, Just Beachy, and Calamity Canyon. A recent Activision blog has gone into detail about the beta and noted that Toys for Bob will be using this period to test hero balancing, cross progression and cross platform matchmaking to prepare for the game's launch in June. While progress made in the closed beta won't carry over from the beta into the game's launch, the early feedback from the closed beta participants will be instrumental in creating a more polished experience for all players when the game launches on June 20th. Unfortunately though, there is a bit of a downside to this beta. It is only available to those who pre-order either the basic or the deluxe edition of the game prior to April 24th. You could, I guess, pre-order the game and get the beta just to try it out, and if you like the game from there, keep the pre-order going. Or, alternatively, you could just seek a refund if you find that in the beta, the game isn't necessarily to your liking. Admittedly, this was one of the big concerns I had for the game. If you've already got players like me who are interested enough and open-minded enough to try a new Crash Bandicoot experience and are sold on buying the game, surely you'd want to try and sell the game to the doubters and the naysayers, as well as the more uncertain Crash fans who at this stage say that they won't buy the game. In my opinion, the best way to do this would have been to have had an open beta rather than a closed beta, or at least do an additional open beta closer to the game's launch, possibly in May or early June, to get as many eyes on the game as possible. But we'll have to wait and see if an additional beta, an open beta, does happen closer to the game's launch. 
In saying that, Toys for Bob was asked about an open beta for Crash Team Rumble, but they didn't have a response to that. Many people take that as a no, but I'm hoping an open beta could be possible in May with the closed beta coming two months before launch, an open beta one month or a few weeks before launch could be the deciding factor between players getting the game or them skipping the game entirely. Initially, at the time of me scripting this video, there was a massive concern about there being no word of a physical release for Crash Team Rumble, which was adding fuel to the fire for the detractors of this game. But at the time of me recording this video, there has been confirmation of a physical edition of the game. Granted, all copies of the physical versions of the game will be the deluxe edition, as there will be no physical release for the base game, which is an interesting choice. I don't know why they've excluded the basic version from a physical release, as I think it would have been nice to have options for people, but I digress. You'd be forgiven for thinking that with the game having a physical release, offline modes like single player adventure mode or a local multiplayer would be all but guaranteed for Crash Team Rumble. However, unfortunately it has been confirmed that this will not be the case, at least not at the time of the game's launch. In a developer presentation with Toys for Bob associate creative director Lou Studdart and creative director Dan Neal, the pair were asked whether the game had any narrative or storytelling components and they confirmed that Crash Team Rumble will be entirely multiplayer focused. A journalist from the gaming news website Well Played later asked an Activision representative for clarification on the matter, and they specifically made a point of asking for confirmation that there would be nothing resembling a story mode within the game due to its multiplayer focus. The answer that the journalist received confirmed that to be correct, however the representative did confirm that the game would receive updates over the course of its lifetime. Now whether that last part about updates means a single player mode of some description could eventually happen further down the line isn't clear, and while I'm trying to be optimistic about it, judging by the response, it's probably a good thing I'm personally not holding my breath. So although it seems like there's no story mode, the talk of updates suggests to me that there is still a possibility for small bits of lore to be included in other ways. For example, think of how Crash Team Racing Nitrofield expanded the lore of each Grand Prix season with a cutscene introducing the new characters. Fortnite is another example which tends to expand its lore via cutscenes that play at the beginning of each chapter in each season. It stands to reason that Crash Team Rumble could do something similar, but naturally with this being a spin-off, don't expect any lore updates to necessarily be canon to the narrative of Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, or any possible sequels to that game. I have to say though that the lack of a story mode would certainly be a disappointment. Personally, I've always enjoyed the stories that we've had in some of the spin-offs, with Crash Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart being two examples of spin-offs with solid stories. And although we had spin-offs with bizarre stories like Crash Bash and Crash Tag Team Racing, I enjoyed what they had to offer in terms of a narrative, so I think it would certainly be a missed opportunity to not include a story mode here. This will undoubtedly be something that will be brought up by the game's detractors who will take a lack of story mode and other perceived negatives, for example reusing assets such as models, scenery and music from Crash 4, to illustrate their points against the game, with one of their most common points being how this whole game feels like it should have been tacked onto Crash 4 as an online multiplayer mode instead of it being its own paid product. And I feel a lack of story mode will definitely turn some players away from the game entirely, especially those players who tend to be more interested in a solo gaming experience in contrast to one that's perpetually online. However, while I personally would be disappointed by a lack of a traditional story mode, one of my other big concerns I have is with regard to the lack of any offline modes at all. While I understand that the online gameplay is the main attraction of this game, I am concerned with how future-proof the game is. There will inevitably come a time where online functionality in games like this are no longer supported by the developer and the publisher. If we look back to Crash Team Racing Nitrofield, we know it has online functionality, which is still running now in 2023, albeit the servers are a tad dodgy and sometimes you find yourself winning a long time for a match. Eventually though, when the online support for Nitrofield is sunset, people can still enjoy the game in other ways by playing the adventure mode as well as single player offline races and not to mention the time trial and ring rally modes, and that's before you even consider local multiplayer. 
At this stage though, there is no offline mode confirmed for Crash Team Rumble. And while I don't expect the game to die off quickly or anything like that, I do think some form of offline mode is necessary to future-proof the game. Without it, if and when functionality online is ceased, there will be no point in buying it because the game will be completely unplayable. Anyone who's pre-ordered the physical edition will basically have an expensive drinks coaster, and anyone who buys it digitally won't even have that small luxury. Crash Bandicoot fans recently saw how disastrous it was not to future-proof games when the developer King terminated Crash on the run in February of this year. No official efforts were made to preserve the game and keep it playable in its current state, say for example with a patch to remove the game's online requirement in order to function, leading to the game essentially becoming abandonware for a short period of time. If it wasn't for the efforts made by some very talented and dedicated individuals in the Crash Bandicoot community who decided to go out of their way to preserve the game and in essence tentatively restore some of its functionality via a custom server, then it would be all but certain that Crash on the Run would become a memory, lost to the dust of time as has happened with other Crash Bandicoot games in the past like the iOS versions of Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 3D and Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 2. Though I should say in talking about Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 3D, recent efforts have been made to get Nitro Kart 3D playable again via a new app called Touch HLE which aims to emulate old iOS games. Here's hoping that they can also get Nitro Kart 2 working because honestly I have a soft spot for that game. But anyway, back to what I was saying though, some kind of story mode or some form of offline mode is not only vital for future proofing and general game preservation, but the lack of either one will also be problematic for anyone who wishes to play the game but doesn't have access to a decent internet connection, especially say people who live in rural areas. And trust me when I talk about rural internet because hey, I used to be a farm kid out in the country. Stable and accessible internet out there is not always a guarantee. And while it's not a guarantee anywhere you live, if you live in the city or a town, it's much more likely for you to have a reliable connection or to have the internet quickly fixed by a technician if it goes down. That's not always necessarily the case for anyone who lives rurally. On top of that, I've spoken with fans who are not only disappointed with the news that the game will primarily be focused on the online gameplay, but they're also disappointed because Crash Team Rumble will require an online subscription to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live to play the game online. And as a result, you will have more people who won't be buying the game at all, as it is completely online only and has no offline modes. And while I understand that we are in the digital age of gaming with paid DLC, microtransactions and online gaming subscriptions, I do feel that some concessions need to be made for players who cannot or do not want to have to go online to play video games. So I do hope an offline mode is added at some point because I really do think it's important not only for game preservation but also for all fans to generally be able to experience the game with or without an online connection. Moving on, another concern I had was how Toys for Bob had been very keen on telling everyone that the one thing Crash Team Rumble is apparently not is a multiplayer online battle arena, also known as a MOBA, which for some people is a bit of a dirty word. The thing is, I've seen plenty of comments online and many gaming journalists who have labelled it as a MOBA, and in no way am I saying Toys for Bob is wrong. However, the issue I have is that if they say this isn't a MOBA, why aren't steps being taken to correct people on their preconceived notions about Crash Team Rumble being a MOBA? Though I myself have limited, practically zero experience of MOBAs, after looking into them a little, I do feel like I can see some MOBA inspiration in some parts for Crash Team Rumble. And I mean, this game's hardly League of Legends or Pokemon Unite, but I do feel like there's some slight inspiration there. And that's okay, don't get it twisted, inspiration's a fantastic thing. It's not like having elements that feel slightly MOBA-inspired necessarily make Crash Team Rumble a MOBA as a result. If that were the case, saying I was inspired to learn guitar after listening to Guns N' Roses would make me slash. Saying it's not a MOBA is perfectly fine, but I think Toys for Bob have missed an opportunity to go into depth and explain what makes Crash Team Rumble not a MOBA. Explain how it stands out and what it does that makes it so different to the point that Toys for Bob themselves have described it as something new not seen before, which according to them doesn't really fit in with any pre-existing game genre. 
At this moment right now though, some people are hearing the words not a MOBA and visually they seem to get a different impression. There's also quite a common argument online about the game, one that I can in all honesty say that I can see some merit toward, that being the feeling of kind of being a little unsure who specifically was wanting this kind of Crash Bandicoot game. I don't think any Crash fan necessarily had sat down and posed the idea of making a competitive team-based multiplayer platformer before Crash Team Rumble got revealed. But then again, on the flip side of that argument, you could say, well, who gets to ask for specific video games anyway? I know you just don't ask for a video game and developers magically listen. I mean, if that were the case, we'd have had a brand new Spire of the Dragon game by now. And while I know that plenty of other people had similar sentiments about Crash Team Rumble, when I say that I don't know who specifically was looking for this kind of game, I don't mean to necessarily frame that in a negative light. In fact, I appreciate that Toys for Bob are trying something new with Crash, and although it may not be to everyone's taste, I think it is a bold move to try something like this for the Crash series. Because if we're to be honest, the series will be better off for trying new things, whether or not those experiences are successful, instead of just playing it safe and sticking with what it had done before, which could potentially lead to the series becoming stale. In the past, the series has tried its hand at other genres outside the traditional platformer games like kart racers and party games, and also beat em up games and an endless runner mobile game. Personally, I feel like it may have been that way even as far back as 1999, when people would have seen Crash Team Racing for the first time and went, who is this supposed to be for? After all, Crash was a platformer, not a racing game, and the audiences in those two genres probably didn't hugely overlap. Except maybe, I don't know, if you were a Super Mario fan and a Mario Kart fan. And yet that still begs the question, who is Crash Team Rumble for? Recently I saw a hilarious comment online that suggested it was only for newer Crash Bandicoot fans, the ones who discovered the games after the series revival, and that quote unquote old school genuine Crash fans would more than likely not be interested. If anything, they'd deem it a spit in the face. But that simply isn't true. As a longtime fan, I've enjoyed Crash Bandicoot games since I was a young lad growing up in the early to mid 2000s, and I am rather interested in what Crash Team Rumble has to offer. In terms of who this game is for, the best answer I can supply as to who I think it's for is not only for Crash Bandicoot fans, but anyone who is looking for a new experience, and perhaps even people who aren't necessarily Crash Bandicoot fans, but do play competitive games online. Those are the people who in turn could potentially become brand new Crash Bandicoot fans moving forward. At the end of the day, Toys for Bob's philosophy with developing this game seems to have been to not focus on a genre, hence why they're not calling it a MOBA, but they're also not really defining the game by a genre alone, and prefer the fans to describe it. They also wanted to do something new and fun while breaking the mold for the franchise and not be confined by nostalgia as was the case with Crash Team Racing Nitrofuel. Instead they wanted to create an experience that was closer to the mainline games, one that was also able to be played as an online multiplayer game and didn't want to stray into other genres as other spin-off games of the past have certainly done moving to the racing and party game genres. And looking at it, I don't know if this is going to be a game for everyone, and honestly, that's okay. Those who come along for the ride will more than likely enjoy it, while others may need some convincing and others may have really soundly rejected the idea already. But from my personal experience, you can have a video game series you love, and you're still able to look at a particular game and say, yeah, that's not for me. I mean, Lord knows that as a lifelong Pokemon fan, Looking at some of the most recent games, particularly in the Nintendo Switch era, they've left me thinking, yeah, I'm not down with that. But returning to Crash, we're now in 2023, over half a decade on from the revival of the series, and now with a trio of remade platforming games, as well as a remade kart racer, a brand new platformer, and a now shut down endless runner mobile game, all under the series belt. And now it's attempting to tackle a new genre, one that cannot be defined, an online game described as a strategic online multiplayer platformer and definitely not a MOBA. The fact is, looking at what we've seen from Crash Team Rumble, I can say normally I wouldn't go out of my way to play this kind of game. 
The popular games that this could be somewhat compared to, I guess, would be League of Legends or Pokemon Unite, but those kind of games just don't interest me in the slightest. And if I'm being honest, I'm not a huge online gamer. I've been known to dabble in the occasional bit of Fortnite, Rocket League, Call of Duty, and a bit of Grand Theft Auto Online when the mood strikes me. But I wouldn't say I've actively played them for long periods of time, sort of just popping in and out like a visiting relative. Even Fall Guys, which had me hooked at some stages, has seen me have moments of disinterest. Hell, during the game's initial launch in 2020, I stopped playing midway through Season 2 and didn't return until Season 5. That's Legacy Seasons, by the way, not the new free seasons. The last game that had the ability to hook me, truly, with the ability to play online, to the point that I was playing against other players almost daily, was in fact another Crash game. No, it wasn't Crash on the Run, that was just a game I sort of remembered existed on long car rides, or if I couldn't sleep at night or if I needed entertainment while I was sitting on the toilet. No, I'm referring to Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, a game that had me gripped for nine months of updates with back-to-back -back moments of nail-biting action and excitement. On one side, I love the ample amount of content we got over the course of nearly a year, but on the other side, I will admit I did feel a bit burnt out from it all once it was all said and done. Not to mention, I have since felt as though maybe, this is just me, might have developed arthritis in my fingers and thumbs from how often I played Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. <laughs> However, I'm hoping with Crash Team Rumble on the horizon, it will be that game that I've been waiting for. Something which I can play online with friends for days and days on end, but perhaps this time, I personally might be able to take things just a little bit slower, so as not to feel burned out by the end of it. And judging by how each season in Crash Team Rumble will apparently last for a duration of approximately three months, we can afford to take things a little bit slower and just try to enjoy the game. And with Toys Bob having recently confirmed in an interview with Canadian Guy A that they are planning to support the game way past the initial launch and that they'd like to have a conversation with the fanbase after the launch in terms of where to go next and what direction to take Crash Team Rumble in, Things are looking relatively positive for the game at this point. It may not be a revival of or a sequel to Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled as some people on social media were hoping for, but it's nice to see a slightly different approach being taken with this new Crash Bandicoot game. Crash Team Rumble does look somewhat fun and I am rather interested in seeing how it turns out, especially as the one thing that this series has is a wide list of characters and locations it can draw from to include in the game. All in all though, Crash Team Rumble is shaping up to be a potentially interesting gaming experience. Many people, including myself, have been following the news of Crash Team Rumble ever since the days where we heard tidbits of information from leakers and gaming insiders who claimed they had seen early prototype versions of the game from years past. Although at that point the game was under a different name, which was the codename of Project Lava and was in development around the same time as Project Quantum, which later became Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. Even if Project Lava is not the name you're familiar with, you'll definitely be familiar with the name that was designated to the project by the fans, that being Wumper League. It's wild to think just how far this game has come, from teasers that seemed to stop as quickly as they started to months of radio silence, from Wampa League speculation to the inevitable Crash Team Rumble reveal at the Game Awards last year. And now at the time of recording we are only a day or so away from the Crash Team Rumble closed beta. And while I am not still all that sold on the name Crash Team Rumble for being a bit too reminiscent of Crash Team Racing, and because deep down in my heart it will always be Wampa League to me, I cannot wait to try it on the 20th of April. Not only am I eager to try this game and share my thoughts on this with people like you watching this video out there, but I'm sure many of us are keen to see if Crash Bandicoot as a series can successfully pull this off, evolving and branching into a new direction. Fingers crossed, it'll be fun. If you'd like to see how I get on with the Crash Team Rumble closed beta, I am actually intending on streaming all four days of the closed beta live on my YouTube channel so that you can see my reactions live and you can also judge for yourselves whether or not the game interests you. So if you'd like to watch that, feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified about future live streams. 
And also, just a quick note, we are edging closer and closer to 2,000 subscribers. And I'm hoping we can reach that number before the game officially releases to the public on June 20th. So your support would be massively appreciated. But now, over to you. What do you think of Crash Team Rumble? Do you agree with anything I've said here? Do you disagree with me? Are you excited for the game? Are you not interested? Or are you undecided? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to reply to as many of your comments as I can. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, and I hope I'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Bye for now.